This is KIRO TV Channel 7, Seattle, Washington. It's time now for the eyewitness news. Noon report for this Thursday, September 17th, 1981. Good evening, everybody, and good afternoon. I'm Peter Wiggins, and here's what's happening. If the Reagan administration gains approval for its proposed military system sale to Saudi Arabia, the Bourne Company would gain the largest contract in its history. The Reagan proposal under consideration by Congress calls for five airborne warning and control system aircraft and six to eight. KC 707 tanker planes both born products. A born spokesman said that a sale would be the biggest born military or commercial press in history. Top and even a whopping Delta Airlines $3 billion all buy of Model 752 airliners. The State Department has indicated that the AWCS and tanker sales combined could total in the $8 billion all range. The E3A radar equipped a WACS. Airframes and the tankers would be built at Bourne's Renton plant and would be extended at 707 production life beyond 1985. AWACS uses a 707 airframe. More than one half of a contract of Saudi Arabian AWACS would be shared by Bourne's subcontractors in the United States. AWACS is designed to provide only warning against attacked by the air of the sea and does not carry weaponry. Bourne Airspace, one of Bourne's major operating divisions, has about 1,500 employees assigned to the AWACS program now. The president of AWACS production schedule calls for an end to the program in 1985 when the last of 18 of the systems of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization will be rolled out at Brenton. Secretary of State Alexander Ming suggested to Congress today that the veto of the sale of radar planes in Saudi Arabia might threaten American security. In Olympia, Governor John Spellman today ordered a 10.1% cut in state spending if effective immediately, declaring that the state is a financial emergency. The governor also said that he will call the legislature into the special session to deal with the more often money problem and that the tax incentives may with be the mandatory. Susan Hutchinson has a report. At the same time, however, Spellman called the cuts devastating and said, I find them unacceptable. I believe that they can be achieved and vital services continue. Republican leaders in the legislature repeatedly have insisted that the special session was not necessary that the financial problems could be handled by further spending cuts, but Spelman appeared to be trying to restrain both reluctant the legislatures and voters that a tax increase is vitally important. Spelman said that spending cuts would be inquired on all agencies, including education, corrections, and higher education. He said it would be difficult and not impossible for education and institutions to absorb. The cuts, a tax increase may well be mandatory, he said. He said agencies would be also be asked to provide plans and analyze on how they would be handled a 20% cut in case the courts ruled the across the board 10% and would not apply to the schools. Seattle and 13 other school districts across the state today were going to the state Supreme Court to seek an injunction against that, allowing the cuts to apply to basic education. The press conference was one of the Spellman's more dramatic since he took office in January. Rabbit and Tinkin with the reporters while seated around the conference table, the governor delivered his message forcefully while standing at a formal lecture a few feet away. Spellman said now. Figures toppled him to over the weekend showed that the state tax revenue had fallen so drastically that without the cuts that were a tax increase, the state deficit could be two billion dollars or one and a half billion dollars in the next. 183 Bunningham. Spellman would not estimate how many state employees might be laid off, but instead of the figure it could be 19 to 10 percent or higher. Spellman blamed the state's financial woes on a downturn in the national company and then tolerably high interest rates. He also said that the state's tax base has been continually eroded since 1977. He said more than one and a half billion dollars in tax relief in recent years, including dropping the sales tax and food and food and a lid on property taxes. He said that the state was operating $600 million below the level of the state spending allowed. When the voters passed Initiative 62, which was intended to put the cap on the state spending, he also said that the state was also absorbing cuts of $400 million in federal funds next month and predicted those cuts may grow even greater. Spellman said that he likely called me the legislature back even if there were not a consensus over what steps to take to deal with the state's financial problems. It appears that this was an unacceptable situation. Can't wait until January, he said. Up until this week, Spellman repeatedly has insisted that a special session would not be necessary and cannot provide a quick solution to the state's financial difficulties. But he said today that the longer he waits to call back the legislature and the longer it takes approved to a tax increase, the larger the tax boost must be. Eliminate the deficit. He said that he can't not say when he wouldn't call the special session, but added, we may well be talking about early November. Susan Hutchinson, Channel 7 Arts News Olympia. Donna Mantle.
former operator of the International Donut House at First Avenue and Pike Street was sentenced today to up to life in prison for a dozen convictions. King County Superior Court Judge Stephen Riley took the defense motion to set bail pending. A kiss. Appeal saying Manuel poses a threat to the community because of his criminal activity, including dealing in stolen property. Deputy Prosecutor William Brecky had urged that Manhattan that received a consecutive sentence with a minimum recommendation of 30 years. Judge Riley said that the various terms are to be served concurrently so that the Department of Corrections will decide when Manhattan was ready to return to the community. Manhattan was convicted in a series of robberies and burglaries at Seattle residents and restaurants. Witness said he did not participate in crimes, but that he did help plant some of them, supply guns and cars, and shared in some of the loot. Matt not told the judge he was sorry he associated with the type of people he did, but he and said that he was trying to help the youngsters in trouble. The kids are out there and they were crying, but no one wants to listen. He said his donut house long has been a haven for street people and runways. In says in court today that everything he does for legitimate man halt said that he asked for leniency and compassion and a prayer. Frankie he said that because Manhold is older and played a dominant role in the conspiracy, this was a step penalty than any young people who committed the robberies and then testified against them. It all was the most a spiritual supervisory role he performed. Frankie he said, before the sentencing, James Kempton was a lawyer for Manhold said he was dropping a motion for a new trial based upon newly discovered evidence. The sentencing was delayed earlier this month after Kempton reported that a prosecutor witnessed Tommy Morris wanted to be Kansas testimony. Later, Morris told the judge that Manhold had offered paying $10,000 to change the testimony. Kempton said Morris was just trying to get a better sentence and deal for himself. And man out man made no promises to affect the lawyer said it would be a waste of the court's time to consider any more testimony from Morris. Kempton asked that he suspended sentence including one year in jail saying man out could Big bread in there. Manhalt has been a trustee since his bail was revoked this month. And been cleaning always in the courthouse, outside of jail without trying to flee. Kempton agreed. The judge ordered Manhalt to pay the victims for damage and stolen items not recovered. Those costs were worth paying about thirty-six thousand dollars. So what do you do for living? I raise money for my children. 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 Excuse me. In Washington, President Reagan today confirmed he will propose delaying scheduled cost of living increases to recipients of federal benefit in his newest attack on government spending. The proposal at the bottom of a package of a cost cutting measures being ready by the White House are involving a $16.3 billion in the fiscal 1982 outlays that also could be included in closing at the Energy and Education Department and then trimming the federal payable by 75,000 jobs for attrition and termination. The President also proposed to phase out the state of job training program and revenue sharing aid to local governments government to us said today. The sources who declined to be unified as Mr. Reagan's package calls for phasing out the three and a half million dollars CTA. The Comprehensive Employment and Training Act by September 30, 1982 said as the move would eliminate more <coughs> than 500,000 training slots mostly for the poor young employed people. <coughs> The source has also said a $6.4 billion a year federal revenue sharing program for local governments would be phased out over three years under the new plan. A 5% reduction in federal aid, about $320 million will be made in 1982. During a picture taking session today with congressional leaders, Mr. Reagan <coughs> told reporters he will resist pressure to cut any more than $2 billion from Pentagon spending next year. I happen to believe that the changes we recommend are necessary, he said. The deferral of the 1982 cost of living increases would apply to all federal benefit programs including Social Security, Military Retirement, Food Stamps, and Black Lung. For the past several weeks, Mr. Reagan has started additional spending reductions to get back on track for the budget deficit of $42.5 million to $42.5 billion next year and a balance budget by 1984. During the presidential campaign, he promised to abolish the energy and education department that he will abolish. Functions of the two departments would be shifted to other agencies. Four. Officials said he's an at 75,000 workers would save about $300 million in it. 1982 and $3.3 billion over a three year period. They would apply to all agencies and reduce the federal payroll by 6.9%. The deferral of the cost of living and increase would be resulted in it. $3 billion in savings, an official said. The cost of living increases at Social Security would be deferred from July to October 1st, 1982. Other programs would be affected on different dates 
next year. I can't control what happens out there. This is Justin in our eyewitness newsroom from one hour ago. Here, two women in Olympia, the only employees in a Tumwater State Bank branch on the city's west side, was shot and killed about 11 a.m. today during a bank robbery. Gary Spinell will have the report. Gary, well, Peter, they were invited as Kansas Salmon Gubbs. 41.08 a.m. Record, no fees in Olympia, age 33 and 12 at Cabana. 5017 Trang Lakes, Loop Southeast Olympia, age 30. The women were found slumped behind the counter. Please send in cash towards open and empty. Police Chief John Warner said that husband of one of the women called police at 11.01 a.m. to report the shooting and robbery. Warner said the two victims were the only person in the bank at the time of the robbery. They were the only full-time employees in the branch, he said. Bank branch is a small prefabricated building on a remote stretch of Evergreen Park Drive. Your hope when it's needed There's every block, about four blocks away, a police canine unit searched off the Aaron Police Corner and off the section of the city of Grand Bank. And also set up grill box Phyllis Wickle. Water Secretary said the bank is within easy access to Highway 101 and less than a mile from Interstate 5. In London, divers who cut out the wreckage of a British destroyer lying on the bottom of the Bern Sea north of the Soviet Union have recovered the first of 400 bars of Russian gold that sank with a ship in 1942, the director of the salvage operation said today. At 10 o'clock last night, a diver put his hand on that first bar. It was buried in the silver mud in the bomb room. James Ringrose of the Jessup Marine Recoveries Limited it's in a telephone interview. Ringrose said the 628 pound bars from the 60 million dollar cash had been recovered from the wreck of the HMS Edinburgh by early today. He said that all the gold will be recovered within 15 days. The Edinburgh sank May 9, 1942, after being attacked by German U boats and destroyers. The gold, each bar, stamped with a double headed eagle, was a destined for the United States Treasury via Britain to pay for weapons to pull up a. Sounds coming in World War II. The Edinburgh sank about 800 feet north. Water north of Merth Bank, well above the Arctic Circle. The wreckage has been stopped ever since the family was found by the underwater cameras last May. Rainbow said his company had invested in $3.7 million in its recovery program that is based aboard the South Ship's Definitorium. He said, I think your clothes or your shoes? Divers were forbidden by the salvage contract to disturb anything but the gold because of the ship had a war grave hold of the 60 bodies. As the United States recovered and received an insurance settlement for the loss, the recovered gold will be split with just receiving 45% and the Russian and British governments divided the remainder two thirds of the bus got one third of the London. That is because the gold was jointly insured. In Washington, the Postal Rate Commission rejected today for the third time and the Postal Service requested that the cost of a first class tip would be increased to 20 cents. The Commission reaffirmed two previous decisions that had 18 cents charged for as adequate for a first class tip. Postmaster Journal William F. Bolger has warned that the cost of a mail and letter could go up to 23 cents next year that the Postal Service does not get the 20 cent stamp now. Seattle street crime has been on a particularly mean streak in the past several weeks as the number of strong arm robberies and purse snatches have reached new highs. During the three weeks that ended September 9th, 212 robberies of all categories were reported. The vast majority of those were street robberies. Lieutenant Robert Holter of the robbery unit said, It's never been that high in a one month segment, said Holter. In normal week, we get about 35 yada. The figures for the three weeks coincide with the information released yesterday by the Seattle Police Department showing that strong arm robberies, which were involved in intimidation of force, but no weapons have increased faster than any other requirement in the city during the first eight months of the this year. Police Department statistics show that the strong arm robberies that are up from 683 foods, August 1980 to 783 cases for the same period this year. Holter said the trouble is citywide, but the majority of the street crime is taking place around 1st Avenue and Pike Street, where many of the cities in the cities and it's around the area of the Pike Place Market. Most of the victims are bums who are often as not as intoxicated and making them easy and attractive targets for the young street thugs who prey on them, Holter said. We'd like to stop it, but there is no shortage of these types of victims, he said. Street crime against indigenous is tough to stop, usually spontaneous, and when the victim is intoxicated, you can't identify the assailant.
Even if an arrest was made, Holto explained police to often have trouble finding the transient victims in the later to review a lineup of suspects. A combination of information shows that both of the downtown street crimes occurred between 9 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. Holter said police have been working on the problem by the department's crime analyst unit. When I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis by rheumatologist... And with technical squad officials who wanted to the area and street clothes. Holter is not sure if he stepped up police activities caused it, but for the week ending in the last Monday, the street crime has dropped to near normal levels. Scott calls Smith convicted to the murdering three people and terrorizing two others while robbing a river in Heights seven less year. This morning had sentenced to life in terms of five in prison. Smith trying to show no emotion as Judge H. Joseph Coleman told him he would serve the three life terms on three murder counts and two life terms on assault counts. Life terms for assault on Durant concurrently with the murder sentences. Prosecutor Willem Downing said that the sentences mean that Smith will have to serve six years before the car be paroled. Judge Coleman recommended that no parole would be granted. Today, N. Smith was res tested to the judge that he was biased and it should be disqualified himself. Smith said he has found in a civil suit over his treatment during the trial. He also complained that the president's report was undertaken only three days ago and the persistent investigator, he said, told him they didn't complete the short term of a short firm. The denied tax return does my life to stake here, Smith said, but Judge Coleman and said Smith probably rejected an idea of a persistent report that the judge had ordered one on one. Judge Coleman also said he didn't think anything in the report would make much difference in this decision. The judge said he was accepting the prosecutor's recommendation on the sentence because of the seriousness of the crime and because Smith has shown no remorse. He also Smith said several times that he didn't wish to comment on his crime, but Smith insisted spoke in generalities about his constitutional rights being violated. Judge Coleman announced the argument of Smith's lawyer, Fred Barnard, and two criminals should receive the sentence this far. Crown. Timothy Robert Pauly, 22, was Smith's accomplice in a robbery murder at the bar and door tavern on June 12, 1990. Pleaded guilty in February, but he received two consecutive life terms. But Judge Coleman said, in this case, that the surviving victims testified that Smith practiced unbelievable cruelty on them, and the evidence against them was overwhelming. And he said Pauly had admitted his crimes while well, Smith appeared to be a moral. Judge Coleman described the. Investors took very good care of me. Smith as a bright. Other articulate young man. There doesn't seem to be any reason for this. Judge Coleman also said he made no difference that Polly apparently pulled the trigger and killed another two men. They were Lauren Darrell, a night manager at the tavern, and Robert Pierre, a bartender, Lauren the Burford, a former waitress, and a girlfriend of Pierre's dad of strangulation. She had been tied in the neck to a rail in the tavern. The judge also cited testimony of the surviving victims that it was Mip was caused to the charge of robbery. Witnesses said that Polly and Smith forced their way into the tavern at 14.835. Pacific Highway South Smith, Fritton, Burford, Sherry Beckman, Tavern Creek, and Margaret Dowell, and Mary's wife, went in that. He told them to strip and tie Beckman, and Mrs. Dowell took Evan in the bathroom. He took beer for the railing. Dowell and Pierre were tied together in the beer cool, then shut in the head. Court today, Beckman were being sent among the barn door of friends of poison. Both were in black and orange tavern t shirts. And I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say. Seattle acquired an amendment, no name, yesterday that's brand new, the Emerald City, as sparkling the green as the geography it honors. The successor to Green City was chosen from among 18,000 entries in a contest sponsored by the Seattle King County Convention and Visitors Bureau, at backed with money and prizes about 100 businesses and individuals. About 125 entries were submitted to the winner name. The first prize was awarded to Sarah Sterling Franklin, an aspiring novelist who resides in Cranville, California, and the winner and in Deer Harbor or Island during the summer. Miss Sterling Franklin's reason for picking the name in 25 words list was just to be the best. It won her $5,000 worth of prize one week of food, lodging, tickets, and tours in Seattle. The second week in Acapulco, courtesy of Western Airlines and the Princess Tours Love Boat. Her say Seattle's the jewel in the Northwest, the queen of the Evergreen State, the many facet of the city is based Elgus Magic and Beauty. Mary Charles Brewer and Amelia and Shuda, proclamation making Emerald City Seattle's official name. And when it was the mayor showed the flesh of his old television commentary form, going through Wizard of Oz for Seattle that's also had many rainbow in his men have frequently rust. City Councilwoman Jeanette Williams gave the proclamation and the City Council stamp of approval. The name announced mid press conference in the Pacific Northwest Bells downtown on Truman and all formally elaborate security usually accorded by the major political figure of the foreign head of the state.
The mystery ended when Sydney died. Property with Fox's Gym Swap and Jen Lemos Miss Greater Seattle turned up with a very costly array of emeralds and will commentate the occasion. That display a 73 carat emerald that was once among Spain's crown jewels of was the dwarf than a diamond of comparable size. Miss Thomas was dazzling over one mil all worth of emeralds that hailed Emerald City as an excellent choice for our and in being town for his native Boston that mean comes a lot of repercussions. Sean Bass, regional vice president of the United Airlines and the president of the Bureau City felt that the new slogan was equal to the such famous ones as the Big Apple New York, Malaya City in Denver, and the Windy City Chicago. Bass predicted the new name would enable Seattle to improve to the position of tourist draw only 37 among the major cities and greatly increased the annual intermittent income in the 60,000 jobs attributed to tourism here. Greg Trent, general manager of the Post Intelligence, was chosen contest chairman of our judges were Edward Cross, the chairman, UAL Incorporated, Hartley Kruger, executive vice president of the Bureau, Gene Anderson, King TV, Thomas Jeff, the vice president of the Bureau, Bruce Nordstrom, Nordstrom's, and G. Robert Truth Rex, junior chairman of Rainier National Bank, Colin Weber, advertised and designed the official logo tab for Seattle's new name and featured the slogan in the sea of green trees. The Watch 27 winners up to Ms. Jones and Frank Flynn's first place entry, all awesome. But Seattle is otherwise designated. Sunny Andrew Edmonds, Brill Escher, David Bentley, Port Angeles, D.L. Bradley, Marion T. Buck, Jim Cabano, Jennifer Davis, Munson Volberg, J.L. Graham, Bremerton, William Hart, Bellevue, Tom Helke, Robert L. Hershwitz, Bellevue, Michelle Hoover, Bruce e. Johnson, Hunter, Lake State, Tacoma, Dovey Martin, Bellevue, Yavon Nelson, Lake Stevens, Rosalie T. Powell, yeah. Ed and Laura Wheel yeah. of Buffalo, Chris Sherman of Milton, yeah. Mrs. Robert Soto of Jerry L. Sperry of Bob Stelmacher, David Strucky, Tumsey Stelmacher, Erin E. Weeks, Sears, and Marvin M. Zix. Seattle, of course, was not a first employee in the Emerald Department way. Alan Long has been known as the Emerald Isle. Eugene Oregon calls itself in its random area, the Emerald Empire. Breast cancer. Why? One of the three men charged in the seventh death of a Seattle man Sunday morning on the streets of San Francisco has been honored by San Francisco police only a month early for saving a woman from a razor wielding attacker, San Francisco police. Today confirmed that Samuel Picasso 34 was among 12 persons honored for standing bravery at the police chief's annual award ceremony. Picasso was cited for saving Julia Anderson, a dental office manager, and when she was threatened by a man who cost her with a razor, she walked across the plaza at the Bay Area Rapid Transit Station. Picasso rushed the assailant beat him with a belt and with a companion held the man until police arrived. Police said Mrs. Anderson credited Picasso with saving life. Yesterday, Picasso and Calcini 26 were ordered held on to a $350,000 bail and charged with murder and unfair assault and connected with the death of Nicholas Richards III, Alfredo Razor 22, and was held on $100,000 in bail and charged with being an accessory murderer. All three are scheduled and plea in San Francisco on Tuesday. Meanwhile, San Francisco police continued to search for two other persons believed to be men with the three men as they drive the streets early to Sunday in San Francisco's homosexual district. Sean Ripley as rights and his companion Barry Matz, 34 Seattle, as that they were. Homosexuals, a spokesman for the San Francisco police department's home side unit to do today. That Zaniga is believed to be the man who leaped from a car stabbed, which is about 29 times inflicted superficial knife wound on Mass when he tried to enemy Picasso drove the automobile said Russell was an occupying police said Municipal Judge Alfred Goldberg visited North Picasso's bar on the one hundred thousand dollars. South San Jose Cousin eleven thirty seven and eight forty oh nine. The ruling Communist Party put upon Poland and its strongest attack yet on Saudi Arabia. Warned that there possibly a bloodshed in the third, it would use all the means necessary to prevent the independent union from taking political power. An explosion ripped by the regional headquarters of the Palestine Liberation Organization in Sudan, Lebanon, that they killed at, at least 20 people. Half carrot solitaires, 4.99. One carrot, 9.90. In sports, there was no power shortage yesterday for Chicago White Sox, who used Brit Burns pitching to stop the Seattle Mariners on three hits. Chicago ended its kingdom stand with a 3 1 victory. Many of Lonnie Shelton's fellow roommates at La Costa, a weight reduction spa, dance to launch welcome. Remember driving in Mobile A's, but they provided the positive support to the CL Supersonic for Shed 3 Pants to prepare for his comeback. Better jobs now. Baton Wheel and Deputy Sheriff spoke of an anti nuclear blockade at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant's main gate today as the three day arrest total rose to 8 and 40. Bain administration officials urged Congress's approval of a $3.2 billion in the military and economic assistance for Pakistan argued that the six year aid package is virtually needed to help kind of Russian designs in Southwest Asia. The Air Traffic Controls Union has asked 
A federal labor panel to compel the government to resume contract talks with the administration and security for never short of an order dissolving the union. And besides as many problems as the social security system has problems, with its computer system that was close to chaos and seen three years constantly and a brink of collapse officials said some record for three years beyond. <laughs> Two leading let's say to disagreed yesterday on the validity of a one in eighty Million dollars complaints taken to force the state to pay equal wages to women and men doing a comparable work. Elderly Magnolia Women was built out of ten thousand dollars by bunk artists prison of Seattle police officers. State Republicans celebrated Senator Peter von Breckbach's victory in the recall election Tuesday night, but they turned their attention toward the center race and each of Washington that against threats of their 25-24 majority. And a lot of friends and many fans will turn out tonight with the opening of Foster White. Gallery exhibited works by Kenneth Callan, who nearly 50 years has been one of the North Force's most respected artists. And that's me, I was news on the September 17th, 1981 appearance of Kenneth Callan. So be I was whoever starts right now.